Hello, I was recently working on this Grundig 2x4 Super V2000 video recorder and it's been having a bit of trouble with the cassette lift because it needed a new drive belt which I couldn't obtain. Well, a viewer has sent me one, so let's install that. It also turns out I've made a mistake uh, regarding capstan uh, belt change, so let's uh, show you what that was about as well. Let's get stuck in. Alexa, what is a meander plate? According to wikipedia.org, a meander is one of a series of regular sinuous curves, bends, loops... Alexa, bends, stop. No, a meander plate I was specifically asking. We're looking down on the mechanism here so we can see it slightly better than we did last time. So here's the uh, drive belt which has been giving me so much trouble. This is uh, the loading motor drive belt. It does loading and also eject. It's a little fiddly to remove sometimes. Okay, there we go. And the replacement that I've been sent is not as wide, but it is a better dimension, I think. So hopefully that will stay in there and work better. Okay, that's a belt installed. That looks a lot better. Now, I made a mistake the other day. I said that this was the capstan motor, and this is an FG generator, and this is the capstan... Um, flywheel. Well that is a capstan flywheel but this is the capstan motor and the FG generator is actually a, a, a PCB here mounted beneath this plate. That is a drum motor of course. Now the thing is this metal plate here is called it's called a meander plate for reasons I don't know and it has to be centered on here on the spindle and originally there was apparently a metal tool which sits over here and sets the plate um, perfectly centrally it's the center of the motor and I may not have that perfectly centrally uh, set up now it looks very slightly off center so what I need to do is slacken off these screws and find some tool that I can stick in there to center it and I think maybe a, a small socket from a socket set might uh, just fit on that shaft and allow me to center this perfectly let's try that well, it sort of doesn't work because the uh, socket is too small to um, make an impact on this outer uh, hole. So, not quite sure what I'm going to do about that. If I find a bigger socket, of course, it'll s just slop about on the um, centre shaft. I might have to do it by sight. So, I found a screwdriver that just fits into the space between the shaft and the plate and I should be able to put it in anywhere and have it just just fit so I think that guarantees it's central yeah it feels exactly the same gap all the way around that must be central okay with this properly fitted now so that that's perfectly central that should eliminate any wear and flutter problems and I'm hoping this uh, new drive belt will give us a, a good clean eject mechanism. Let's see how it goes. We'll start by, does it load the tape okay? Does it play okay? Um, I have an audio connection problem. I think I know what that mains hum's caused by. I've got mains hum on the sound. And I think it's because I've not yet fitted the screws in the base. OK, we'll come to that in a moment. Let's see if it ejects the tape OK. Oh, perfect. Let's fit the screws in the base. It's relying on this panel for uh, screening. And if the screws aren't fitted, it's potentially floating and just acting as a great big mains hum aerial type thing. Don't forget the sharpness control. Try that. Good. Let's go to the main sum problem. I'll have to listen to this a bit more carefully and listen for whether we still have any um, wear and flutter. Okay, the machine is running. I think there's still a bit of audio flutter in that. Uh, so there's still something slightly wrong there. What could it be? Oh well, it's okay for now. This is only my second machine. Let's see if the jack is still working good. 
that's perfect. We'll take that. So audio flutter, maybe I'll change the motor control board. If I have a spare, that might be worth trying. Right, let me show you what's in the great big box that's sent, been sent to me. So this was sent to me by a viewer called Alex, who I've had various email conversations with for many years now, actually. And he bought this and realized it was gonna to be too hard to fix. So uh, it's been sent to me to play with. It's a Philips N1700 VCR LP machine. I've worked on these in the past. Okay, first and foremost, let's have a quick look at the video heads uh, under a microscope. Okay, let's take a really close look at this um, video head. And from what I can tell, that one looks absolutely perfect. I'll just adjust your exposure slightly. Right, I've set the exposure low so you can see the head tip glistening. There's a little bit of contamination at one end, but that head looks fine from what I can tell. Spot of contamination there, but it's nothing. Right, let's swing it around. Of course, you can't really see head wear like this, but at least you can see if the heads are smashed. And here's the other head coming into view. And again, that looks absolutely perfect from what I can tell. Okay, that looks a promising place to start. Let's power it up and see if the clock comes on. That'll be useful. The clock is working fine. The machine looks fairly nice. It's got the uh, head cleaning guide thing that you stick on his, this guide, which is uh, nice. Okay, as soon as I put the lead lid in, it's running. So the head's spinning and the spool's running. So there's something mechanically adrift, probably needs lubrication somewhere. Okay, well, that looks fixable. Promising anyway. Right, I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning a little bit more about the Grundig 2x4 Super and also uh, having a quick look at this uh, Philips N1700. Please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. <laughs>